The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Once and Always trailer was officially released about a week ago from the time of this recording, and the movie's going to release sometime on Netflix in the middle of April, so I'm going to give you some of my thoughts on this now. Throughout the video, I'm going to talk about most of my reasons why I don't think that this is going to be very good of a movie. However, I'm going to sprinkle in reasons why I think it might be okay along the way, so bear with me, okay? I know that this is probably a hot take in the Power Ranger community of people and whatnot. Me being a bit Power Rangers fan, born in the mid-90s. Let's start off with what they show right away, which is Rita returning. She has back, she's found a new body, and right away, just right away, this is something that already I'm a little bit concerned with how they're going to address this in the film. Now, when the film comes out, a lot of what I say, a lot of my concerns might be fully addressed. I'm just going based off of what they show in the trailer and what we know and don't know, essentially. It's all I can go based off of that. So, Rita returning. <clears throat> in the Power Rangers show... Most people that have watched a lot of the later seasons, though I know that a lot of people only stopped at the end of Mighty Morphin, she was never actually defeated by the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers team. After season three of Mighty Morphin, Rita and Zed were kind of just brushed away thanks to the machine empire that came in. And then this cast of Rangers, these Rangers became the Zeo Rangers, essentially. And so Rita and Zed were pushed off to the side on the moon. They interacted with some stuff here and there. They were involved in some of the episodes going forward, but they weren't the main threat. That was the machine empire. And then they end up being pushed aside again with Divatox and they with Power Rangers Turbo. And they we're pretty much not seen until in space where there's the huge like culmination of all the unit of the Alliance of evil, the Alliance of evils all together. They have them present there. And then at the end of in space is when they also get cleansed. Andros destroys Zordon in his tube. And then Rita and Zed are cleansed of their evil essentially. So they are that they, that's them now. And then also with Rita's, I assume this is like her human form decides to do this. She uses what she knows about magic and then becomes a good force in Mystic Force. In the power in the season of Power Rangers of Mystic Force, she's like the same actress of the Sentai or whatever is Rita essentially that is reincarnate as good magic, like a good sorceress of some kind. I don't specifically understand how all that worked, but that's how that happened. So this. So the trailer implies that she was destroyed and her essence was floating around and she's found a new cyborg body or something. Uh, aside from that, how ridiculous that is based on what we've seen and the continuity of the stuff, I think the design looks awful. I would have preferred a more appealing design of some kind. I don't know. Or a different body that is like a, the flesh. I don't know. This cyborg one just does not really look that appealing to me. It looks hideous. So, Ugh, not great. You know, Zed looked cool and Rita was all right for what she looked like. And this is just like a weird cyborg wearing Rita's costume. And I know that some of you are going to say, like, oh my God, how can you like talk about continuity in Power Rangers? They contradict themselves all the time. Yeah, I understand that. And I point out those criticisms when they happen as well. Continuity is something that I really take to appreciate when it comes to some of this stuff. And sometimes it doesn't bother me as much. Like in Forever Red, some of that stuff is like, I, I guess you can kind of let it go. It still annoys me. But I can let it go sometimes. Like with some of them having their powers that were destroyed already and they're in there. It's like, it annoys me, but I guess, I guess I can let it go. But I'll still address it is my concern. It might bother certain people to a much slighter degree than myself. But anyway, I'm going to continue. And I guess I should continue off of that. So Rita returning isn't something new that happens in the Power Rangers seasons. In one of the more recent seasons, I assume it was Beast Morphers. I haven't watched the most recent one, so I don't know. Uh, Lord Zed returned at some point. They like made him a cyborg resurrection, I assume, of some kind. I don't know. Goldar also returned in some weird new form. So it's not impossible for with the, if that continuity, if all that continuity is still there to have her come back, isn't fully far fetched. If they pull something out or if her evil essence was still around, even though it was cleansed from the woman's body from Zordon. I mean, I, I'm sure there's some way you can make this work. I'm sure. So I just want the film to somewhat address it. That isn't just, something that they completely made up. I'd rather it be something that somewhat follows logically. That's what I'd prefer for it to be better. But just based on what I'm saying, it's probably not going to be that. But we'll see. 
The next thing I want to address is that they have the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers powers back after they were clearly destroyed at the end of Mighty Morphin Season 3. The Power Coins were destroyed. They'd switch over to the Zeo Crystals. However, it's not impossible to still tap into some of the power from those coins based on what we see in Power Rangers in space when they have Adam come back. He tries to help Carlos as a Black Ranger. Carlos is almost about to quit being a Ranger because he's not able to handle some of the problems he's been dealing with in that. Adam comes to help, and he still he found his old morpher, apparently and he's like you know it was a broken morpher broken power coin alpha tells him right there he's like yeah, oh my gosh you cannot use that if you try to use that then that could kill you like the power might drain you it could destroy you because it's so unstable the power coin's not fully functional right there he's like oh you know it's okay and it's all good it's probably not gonna work anyway whatever but then they get attacked and carlos is in trouble because he doesn't have his morpher and so adam decides to risk his life to morph with this broken morpher to be the black ranger again and he's able to briefly be it for a little bit of the fight and then it's like showing that it's like ah, it's draining him down and the power just kind of disappears like kind of implying that that's the last of that coin that that can possibly produce and he risked his life to use it so that had a lot of importance there that i thought was a nice touch so having the powers just simply here again where they can morph into the mighty morphin stuff when they're destroyed to me, just kind of like undoes a lot of that, or it makes it seem not as impactful when it was destroyed in that continuity. If we're going with any of that continuity, which some of what they show in this trailer makes me think we are trying to stay in some kind of continuity, but we'll see. But whatever happens, I'm hoping that in the film there's something like that that's slightly addressed. It doesn't need to be in huge detail. I'm not saying they need to have a huge exposition about it. Just something that's a little bit satisfying as to why they have access to their powers, especially at their current age. And if all the other Power Rangers seasons that have happened is part of continuity, then you've got like, you know, over 60 Rangers around, essentially. So I'm hoping something's addressed with this. But we'll, there's actually something in the trailer that will have me get back to that in a sec so going on to the next thing though we've obviously got a we've obviously got a different lineup of the mighty morphin team one that we have not seen fully together before the original team being billy zach trini kimberly jason and tommy and then <clears throat> later on tommy trini and zach went away and they had aisha Adam and Rocky come back in here. And then Catherine joins them later on as well. So this being the lineup that they have is different than the original team as it was with different people that had the different coins at the time. So I'm curious what they plan to do with this because like Rocky went through a stage as the Blue Ranger as well and then he got kicked out of Zeo and then in Turbo we had little Justin in there. But yeah, last time Rocky was a Blue Ranger essentially. He was the Red Ranger too, but then he became the Blue Ranger in Zeo. Obviously, part of why they're doing this kind of lineup has to do with some of the cast not returning to be in the film, like Jason David Frank and Amy Jo Johnson did not want to be in this for whatever reasons. I'm not sure specifically why. I do know that JDF was filming on the White Dragon with Bat in the Sun at the time that they were doing this, so I don't know if he just preferred to be in that instead and not do this. I don't know. There could be a bunch of different reasons why, and I know that... The guy who plays is Adam as well. Uh, gosh, I forget his name exactly, but he is also in the White Dragon with Bat in the Sun. But he might he's, but he seems to have a lot less screen time in this film. So I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. And Amy Jo Johnson didn't return. I've seen her on Twitter talk about people saying that she didn't return because she wasn't paid enough money. But I mean, one, there's no obligation for an actor to return to something that's like over thirty years old, essentially. Like, she doesn't need to return for anything. No actor needs to return to something just because they have a reunion episode for a plentiful amount of reasons. She could be very busy with whatever's going on in her life. She might not want to do it because of the amount of money being paid. That could be a reason, even though some people think that that's not a good enough reason. That is a possible reason. There could be a whole bunch of things. Maybe there's some issues with some of the cast people on the crew. I don't know. There could be a bunch of freaking reasons. Probably not best. Probably best to not get into it. Probably best to not get into it. And then we've got the actress who played as Trini, and she unfortunately died in a car accident a long time ago, so she can't be in it. But that is something that I'll go into in a minute here with the team. Now, Billy being back as the character, last I remember him as far as the show's continuity is that he was living on Aquatar. Because they had the Alien Rangers come in during the Mighty Morphin series, and he ended up 
like doing a lot of stuff with them. And he went to Aquitar at some point. No, because he was the he. No, he didn't leave in Mighty Morphin. He was still in Zeo, but he wasn't a Power Ranger. He was basically their tech guy. He was their guy. He was their brains that would be at the command center helping Alpha, trying to build Zords. And then at some point in Zeo, I think he went to live on Aquitar. One of the alien rangers returned in that season, and he went to go help them over there. As far as I can tell, that was the last time that we saw Billy on Earth was when he left to go to Aquitar. So they could have reasons why he comes back. I mean, they have space travel and other stuff in this show all the time anyway, and they do that in Mighty Morphin as well when they go to the Cayman Rider area too. So that's not impossible. I'm just trying to address what they show here. I'm not complaining here. I'm just addressing what they show. Moving on to a choice that I think is a good one that they do in here is that they show a yellow ranger, which is implied to be Trini, and they seem to have her daughter in here, and they show a picture of Trini for a brief second in the trailer as well, that they show that Rita kills Trini in this. And I think that that is an excellent idea, especially considering the actress is unfortunately dead that plays her, but this is something good for motivation. The first actual on-screen Power Ranger death that... I'm aware of, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it's in Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, where Kendrix gets killed with the Psycho Ranger stuff, and Cassie's there in that crossover, uh, one the first crossover, and probably one of the best crossovers ever, honestly. But that pretty much had the first Power Ranger death on screen. And so I do like Mighty Morphin trying to go this route as well. Even if this is a different continuity, I prefer the continuity to be in sight, but if it's not, it's not the end of the world. I can I can sometimes, you know, go, okay, I understand we're not doing what the continuity is, but here's what we're doing anyway. I like the addition that they would have a Power Ranger get killed because that raises the stakes for Rita and how much more powerful she might be and how much more of a threat that she is and how as goofy as she was as a villain can be taken a little seriously too. You can't forget that she is a powerful sorceress that can freaking end you. Like she's not just a goofball. She can destroy you. So that is something that I think is pretty good. And I think she even says that I want to kill you before Zordon has a chance to recruit more rangers or something. I forget the specific line, but she says kill specifically. And knowing Rita, she would never say kill they, she always says, you know, I will destroy you. Like, it's always something like that. Send you to the next dimension kind of talk. I don't even know what my point is with that. I just, she just usually says destroyed and whatever. That's, I don't even know what I'm talking about with that anymore. Just moving on. All right, we're going into the final stretch now. So another thing that we notice, of course, is that Alpha is back. And Alpha, I don't think, was ever fully destroyed. Though I've heard that he was Alpha 5 and then there's Alpha 6 in space or something i'm not I'm not sure if they're implying there's a different alpha but i'm assuming this is still just alpha 5 and i don't think he ever was fully destroyed i don't know but the original command center was destroyed twice essentially there's like two of them that were destroyed most of the bases get destroyed in a lot of these power ranger shows by the way and it seems like this one is a new one that is newly built and it seems to be at a different location than it was before this is not a problem necessarily it's just you know, again, with continuity, depends on what they're doing here. And they show that there is a Zordon container in the back, and it seemed to be cracked. It didn't seem to have Zordon there. You don't hear him say anything in the trailer. So I'm not sure if he's going to be in this, in which I actually hope he's not in this, really. But if he is, I mean, keep in mind. So he was destroyed in space. and Power Rangers in space, he was destroyed, and that pretty much took care of a lot of the evil stuff that's going on in the universe. Not everything, but it destroyed some of it. And that was a pretty impactful moment. That was, in a way, the first, like, major, 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 major character death. Because Zordon was the connective glue that set every single thing in motion. Recruiting the Power Rangers, dealing with Rita, everything. All this history, all this knowledge, everything. That was Zordon. And so I'm okay if he, even if he was destroyed, even if he was destroyed in space with that continuity, I'm okay if they have it be that he somehow returns. Because technically, I mean technically, Zordon might not have even been destroyed there. He was in a time prison, I think is how that was described. Like Rita caught him in a time thing and that's why he's in the tube, not because he wants to be, because that's how that's where he's kind of stuck, is in these tube things he can travel through. He can go to different dimensions and whatnot, but to be in our dimension, he has to be in this tube thing. So 
if he comes back in some kind of way, that could be very interesting dialogue to hear him talk about something. Even if I don't think it lines up, I still think that would be cool to see him say something. I'd, I'd, hopefully, I don't, I don't know what I'd expect him to say, but having Zordon dialogue could be really interesting. Moving on to Adam and Aisha. They are just very briefly in the trailer as well. And they seem to be talking to them on a communication thing and saying, you know, good luck. You guys can do this. They are not likely going to be in the film for that much. They're probably not going to interact and fight. But this is actually something that gives me a little bit of hope that they're going to do something interesting with the continuity here. Because Adam and Zack were both the Black Ranger at different times. Zack passed his powers on to Adam. So with that there, and then uh, Aisha was also a Yellow Ranger after Trini. So having them in there, but not be the main Rangers that we're following here, shows me that like not just the first season of Mighty Morphin, not just the second, but like the third, I think could also be in some type of continuity here. Maybe they do have this done in a way that makes some sense. Not to mention where Adam and Aisha are, I'm not sure their stuff is too obscure for me to tell where they are, but it looks like a futuristic kind of thing. So they could be in the present or in a different universe. I don't know. Okay. They, they do interdimensional stuff and time travel things all the time in Power Rangers. So it's, that's not something I'm going to have as like a plot hole. If anything, I'm using that as a way that may, maybe this is going to keep a level of continuity with the Power Ranger shows and are having it work in here in some kind of way as well, which I think is a good thing. And speaking of a good thing, mentioning time travel, I think it mentions that she wants to travel back in time to before Ranger can recruit more Rangers or something. So she's like wanting to take out the Power Rangers before all the Power Rangers became a thing, which is interesting because I remember a long ass time ago, they were mentioning that time travel would be a key part in whatever power ranger movie was going to come out and it seemed like it was going to be like a cinematic thing and whatever but this might be what they were referring to i'm not sure if this was the same movie that they had in mind to make their own power ranger thing and regardless of that time travel's been in power rangers for a very very long time they time traveled in mighty morphin for one there was Power Rangers Time Force, one of the better seasons of Power Rangers in general anyway, and SPD time travels, there's time travel all the fucking time in Power Rangers, so I don't have, as much as time travel could bother me in other movies and situations, in the Power Ranger universe, that's just as common as going to the supermarket, practically. I'm just gonna time travel, whatever. That's So that's fine, and that might actually be a reason why we don't see other Power Ranger teams in the movie, because a lot of the action might be taking place going back in time and if zordon is in this and alpha and whatever like this might explain some of that and why this specific ranger team goes back by themselves and why tommy and kimberly aren't there and whatever like adam and because they're going back in time and maybe they only have a few people they can teleport with them maybe they're they have to act really quickly so they have to go right now and they can't wait for people to gather what have you that might be part of it which could that alone could actually like fix a lot of things that I'm concerned with for why it's happening like this. And so, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on the trailer with what they show. I am very curious if anybody watched the whole video all the way through here, my, my video here, because this one became kind of a chonker compared to what I was just going to simply say that I th thought would take just a couple of minutes here. Uh, I, I would assume that after listening to me, you know that I do love Power Rangers, even though I have my own criticisms for the show, and I and I don't hold a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as the end-all, be-all of Power Rangers. I consider it to be... I don't even know if Mighty Morphin cracks top 10 of the Power Rangers seasons, to be honest. I don't know. I'd have to look at the seasons a lot better to really determine that. I don't know. But I am excited for this, though, because one of the things that we did... Because one of the things that I did notice... I just checked this out before I made this video here. One positive note, I want to end on a positive note, is that this seems to be created with a lot of passion. The actors that are in it really want to do this. They are appreciating the fans. They are trying to give you a little bit of nostalgia in a way that is fine. We're so used to Hollywood right now, pump pumping out so much shit, crapping on characters that you love. They just don't give a fuck. They're just trying to get a cash grab. They're just trying to screw around. They don't care about what the fans think. 
But with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, with Once and Always right here, it seems like the entire thing wasn't just made for the purpose of Power Rangers is a big franchise. We can get a lot of money out of this, huh? No, it seems to be like it was like, okay, we can do something here that the fans will like. They've gotten a lot of, there's a lot of years, many years that they can go with to back up that people still like Power Rangers. There's so many people that like Power Rangers, so... This is, it's good that they're trying to make something that people like, even if there's some type of continuity flaws in the film that bug me, there could still be a lot that happened in this film that I can enjoy and take away and seeing just them talking about it with the passion that they do gives me some hope that this will be also entertaining, even if it's not as logically sound as I'd like, it could still be an entertaining fun fest. So with that, let me know what you guys think in the comments below and have a great rest of your day.